Hey, what's up, guys? Today, we're back again with my number one tryhard deck. Whenever I really want to win, I dig up this deck because it's by far the best minor poison deck in the game. Since Goblin's Little Prince, Ice Spirit, and Minions are overpowered on defense, they'll constantly give you positive elixir trades. And with more elixir than your opponent, you'll be able to find opportunities to get mortar connections and drop minor poisons on tower for guaranteed direct damage. If you master this minor poison deck well enough and refine your defensive placements, there isn't a single opponent or deck that you can't beat. I like playing decks like this one where I feel like I'm always improving and getting better. And if I lose, I know I can learn from the loss so I can get better at the matchup and win more often in the future. And even though it's a minor poison deck at core, having the Mortar Evolution and the Little Prince ability allow you to take towers with one push. If your opponent messes up or you make outplays, you'll collect free wins and rush up the ranks. When the best professional players really want to win, a lot of them turn to play this deck. Including Pedro, the Clash Royale World Finalist that was playing in CRL for over a million dollars. This was his main deck. It's time to elevate our skill while we dig our opponent's towers down and assert dominance. A whole lot of love to everyone that's using Critic Concert Tag to make the daily videos possible. Hey, this guy finished 318 in the world. All right, cool. So we have a pretty good player on our hands. I'm going to go in for a mortar first play and we'll see if we can get some nice damage. We're seeing a fisherman, so it's probably going to be a goblin giant deck or a royal giant deck. So I want to go goblins directly on top of the fish boy, finish it off that way. And then he's going to have golem? What the heck? All right, I totally was not anticipating that. Out of all the card combinations that we could have played against, Golem was not on the menu. My man, surprising me right now. So I could poison. I think that's going to be our best bet just to kill all the Nightwitch bats and blast down the Nightwitch inside the poison so then the one bat that spawns after the Nightwitch dies immediately dies as well. Cool. So he used his arrows. He's not going to be in a good position to defend against these minions most likely. Of course, we're going to go opposite lane because anything that he counter pushes with, it's not going to go on the side that he's got his huge amount of golem death damage on. Oh, wait. Yo, yo, we're getting it all back and more. That's something we adore. Those minions popped off. Okay, so even though we're at six elixir, we're keeping up the pressure with another mortar because against golem decks, we never want them to go in for a golem to be able to counter the mortar. We want to make sure his elixir is low enough that he's going to have to drop supporting cards to counter the mortar. And if he only has supporting cards... He doesn't even want to do that. He just wants to go all in with his golem. And the cool thing about this is most mortar decks would lose in the face of a golem push. But since we have Little Prince, we can knock back the golem and damage everything down and use our poison when he decides the Night Witch. So that's the strategy that we have here. So he's going to Fisherman. That's a phenomenal Fisherman, by the way. That was incredibly smart. I'm going to go in for a log so we can knock most of this stuff back and then go in for a mortar and then poison on everything. The reason why that was so smart of him is because now we can't use the Little Prince ability to kill his golem and we couldn't use the ability to knock everything back so instead we were forced to go in for our defensive evolved mortar which is not something that you want to be doing with this deck also the guy ignored an entire mortar and his towers and shambles it's interesting to see people do that let's go minions i think they'll take the entirety of the tower if we go for a minor with it so let's just let that happen and see if he's going to respond i don't think he will oh he's going to arrows on it wow i'm shocked that he would do that all right let's go little prince but this time we're going to go for goblins and we're going to go and protect it He's going to Fisherman. We're going to go Goblins. It's not going to work today. Uh, he's going to Lightning, interestingly enough. I didn't think he would have a big spell. Just like judging by the fact that he had double small spell in his deck, I didn't think he would have room for that. What the heck? Okay, so one of my favorite things to do against Little Prince is going for minions. Because if you think about it, the minions will never die to the Little Prince ability. That's always going to be good counter push for us. We can go in for a Goblins so then we can pull the Skeletons a little bit further away. And then we can poison on all the stuff that's coming at me. So as long as the fisherman dies to this miner, we're fine. I do think the minions will take the tower, so I won't have to respond with that much. Yeah, we get it. GG. So first win of the day, we take those. Even though the guy ended up having errors for our minions, you're still able to collect the win. Applying the opposite lane pressure against golem players that don't have defense in their vocabulary generally guarantees wins. As long as you can defend with slightly less elixir, which this deck excels at as long as you know your placements. And after piercing the tower of that golem arrows player, we've pushed up to 1,245 in the world. We're just missing the three in between. One, two, four, five. Yo, we got a game against someone that finished 561 in the world. He's giving us good luck. I think we'll probably need that. We're going to go in for our own good luck and a mortar in the right-hand side. So I want to see what he's going to respond with. It'll tell us a lot about his deck. Oh, wait, he's going to have a giant and it's probably going to be giant graveyard. So let's position our little prince away from the mortar, slightly behind. So if he goes in for a bowler, it will target the mortar first. The little prince is going to stay there, stationary, ramping up the attack speed. Oh my gosh. Did not expect our opponent to be running Sparky, but I guess it does make sense. I'm going to click the ability so the Sparky doesn't hit our precious little prince. And we'll see if we can kill the Sparky. 
Should be a dead Sparky here. Nice. Let's Miner in preparation, expecting the Sparky to die. Maybe this is the worst Miner of my life. Oh, the Ice Spirit doesn't kill. Wait, if we poison? If we poison, we can kill the Sparky with the poison. The Miner stays alive, and then we poison whatever he drops in the Miner. Ah, come on. Drop something on the Miner. <laughs> We did that so the miner was able to stay alive. We performed the ultimate sacrifice for that miner. He better appreciate me for that play. Because uh, I might die for that, to be honest. I don't know if that was worth We're in a mortar in preparation for him to go all in. I just want to play defensive right now. I don't trust this man. I'm going to go Ice Spirit. Hopefully we can kill most of his stuff, but looking really sketch. Obviously, one of the bats locking onto us is not ideal. But we'll have to take that damage so then we can defend for the rest of this time. Because sometimes there's guaranteed damage that you are forced to take. As much as we want that bat not to lock onto us, if I had allocated Elixir towards that bat with goblins, well, the Skeleton King would have had some other things to say to my little prince, and they wouldn't have been so nice. My little prince definitely would have died. So, I could poison on the bats. I don't know if that's a bad decision, because if we do, he could just giant graveyard me. I don't know. I mean, we're going to log. The giant's dead. Wait, that worked out so well. I'm going to say it was calculated, even though I had no faith in that play. <laughs> I was like, if one bat survives and gets behind the giant, then I'm going to take a ton of damage. All right. So we know that we can go for a mortar aggressively right now and then go for an ice spear on whatever he decides to drop just so we can body block. Get a Sparky. I don't think that's like the best Sparky for him because it will die to have two poisons and a log. I think we can start to do that with our little prince. I don't know if it's the best play of my life, but I'm going to roll with it. Or we can get a little prince ability, poison, and then... Just keep our mortar alive just long enough to get an extra shot. Yo, this is working so well. Everything's dead. Little Prince might even kill the Sparky. Okay, it didn't happen. I was hoping. <laughs> I was praying, but we didn't find a way. Yo, no, not again. Miner, we can't save you this time. Okay, he's going to arrows me. That makes sense. Let's just go in for a mortar defensively instead of going for the double poisons. Because he's going to have so many bait cards in his deck, I don't want to throw the game. Actually, screw it. We're going to do it anyway. Poison should allow us because the mortar is going to target onto the Sparky. So that's uh, what we're looking for. He's going to zap and retarget it. Wait, he didn't retarget it. Wait, we're fine. I think. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, we're going to log here. We're going to redirect everything. And then I think we can just click the ability. And then, oh, wait. Those evolved bats. Those evolved bats are brutalizing me. Yo, dude, stop it. I can't kill those stupid two bats. Yo, chill out for a second, man. I did not sign up for this. Damn, that did a lot of damage. That was actually crazy. I, I I, might lose the game because Evolved Bats hurt me so much. I did not expect that to happen. All right, well, we're going to poison here. We're going to go in for a mortar, and we're going to cycle back to another one. We're going to log, and we should kill the Sparky with two poisons and a log and a mortar shot, maybe. So that's what we're going for. We're going to go in for Little Prince. I'm going to go Minions here. We know for a fact that we're able to knock this all back. That's huge. I can go Ice Spirit, and then I can go Goblins on this as well. We should be able to get this around. I played that perfectly on defense. That was such a clean defense, guys. I'm really proud of that surround and Ice Spirit hitting all the bats. Obviously, that was great. Uh, the Sparky shot my tower, but I think I can go for two poisons and win. And that's what I'm going to try to do right now. Yeah, yeah. Let's go for a Mortar. Let's go in for Goblins. And let's go for everything that we have to get back to another poison and win. I don't know. We're taking everything down, and I'm hoping, I'm praying that we can just win with this poison in time. Oh my gosh. Chill out with the skeletons, bro. <laughs> that was an intense battle against Sparky. And if I hadn't hit that Ice Spirit Goblins perfectly on the defensive end with my micro, we would have gotten slapped. It's incredible how cost-efficient one and two elixir cost cards are if you know how to place them properly. Even against the best players in the world, they'll give you beyond broken value. Allowing us to outplay a Sparky player that finished 561 in the world last season at over 2,700 medals. Hey, we got a game against the brightest of lights. We're dropping a good luck here, and he is a top 451 player. We're always going to go Ice Spirit before we go in for Goblins because we want to find out where the Miner's dropped so that we can conveniently catch it every time. So even if the Ice Spirit misses, we're able to then go in for the Goblins directly on top because the Ice Spirit will reset it. So I'm going to go for Little Prince here. He's going to Inferno Dragon. We can get minions down if we're fast enough and we don't get it down quick enough. So probably going to be a, I would say, a, a Miner Balloon deck from our opponent. I think that's what it's going to be. With Evolved Knight, so it's going to be Miner Balloon... Fireball? Yeah, I think it's going to be Fireball. It's unlikely that it's going to be Freeze. So I'm going to Ice Spirit. I'm going to try to go in for a Miner and go Goblins because most of the time they're going to have Snowball or Rage. These Goblins will do a lot of damage. 
And then we can go for Little Prince directly on top of the balloon. And then we can go in for a mortar afterward. Notice how the miner's tanking for the goblin, so he's in a horrible spot. Then we can go for a mortar because we know that the mortar is just going to apply pressure with Little Prince still on the field. And Little Prince doesn't even cross the river, so then we can go click the ability. Kill his knight, and then have the mortar getting tanked for. Then reset his Inferno Dragon with our Ice Spirit and just instantly win the game. Well, I played that perfect, I think. We knew that he couldn't deal with the pressure that we were about to throw down, and he just left the game. He dipped out of that one so fast. Even against, like, top 1,000 players in the world, or I guess top 451 in the world, you can make plays that make them rage quit, even though you're running a minor poison deck. Just because you have the Little Prince with the Evolved Mortar, and then you also end up having just the firepower of minions plus goblins, which do a ridiculous amount of damage if left untouched. But yeah, this guy tapped out, and... We are going to keep collecting crowns and pushing up as fast as possible. It's lights out for bright light. I just wanted to say that. As we continue to light our trail to the top of the leaderboards at 1,000 in the world. All right, if we win this game, we push to 2,500 medals. And this guy is top 400 in the world. So we'll see if we can beat him. Definitely going to be a talented sir. You already know when he cycles night in the back, it's a time for us to go for the miner in the right. Just because we want to force out goblins that we can log. Okay, he's going to go ice spirit. He's not going to go goblins. He's going to drop goblin gang. Wait, I bet you it's going to be a bait deck, which he might go princess. So let's go in for our little prince here and then go and counter the goblin barrel with our goblins. This should be a full counter plus one elixir trade as well. And the goblins are going to counter push. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for an ice spear in front of the goblins to force out some extra elixir from our opponent that he doesn't want to drop. Then I'm going to go in for our little prince ability. Oh my gosh, we finessed him, boys. Somehow, some way, the knight went to the other side and we're in a beautiful position. Okay, so I have to minor on defense, and the reason why we're doing that is because otherwise it's just going to die to the princess, and I don't want to be stupid. I want our minor shovel to be a threat. I wonder if it kills the princess. Please, that would be the best interaction ever. Please, one more, one more, one more. No! It would have been perfect. Anyway, we can go in for goblins again against the goblin barrel. We're currently up a lot of damage. I'm feeling phenomenal in this position. We're going to log on top of the goblin barrel. We're going to go ice spirit. We're going to go in for another mortar, possibly. No, he's going to go for a tesla or inferno tower, depending on what happens. Poison takes three ticks to kill a princess. So, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to kill it. She would have wandered outside. We can go for a little prince, snipe that, and then go in for a minor if he predicts it, and he does. Very good player. He's trying to make some finesse happen, but as long as we kill the princess, we're okay, because we can log against the goblin barrel. It's going to be directly on tower. We looked at the shadow and identified where it was going to be. I think we can Ice Spirit here as well, and then possibly defend everything with the Little Prince. The goblins are going to give us damage, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> Those greedy goblins are nonstop aggression. Man, this guy is really wild, and he's playing so well. I mean, he is a top, like, 400 player, so he's not giving me any momentum after the start. All right, you know what? We can drop defensive mortars if we really wanted to, but that's not how I play. Is it how I play? Yeah, it is how I play, because he might go Goblin Gang and protect the princess. He's going to go Ice Spirit instead. I usually don't do this, but that's how we play today. We're going to go for goblins off to the side. The outside goblin always gets targeted first, so that's the best placement of the goblins to counter the goblin barrel. We can go for a poison here, since the, most of the goblins are going to wrap around, and the princess will die with one more tick. That's perfect. Three. That's exactly what we needed. We do have log and cycle for the goblin barrel, and he is so tilted. You know what? Let's tilt him a little bit more. Let's tilt him a little bit more, my dudes. We're going to go little prince. We're going to click the ability on top of the Tesla or whatever he wants to drop. Oh, wait, the goblin barrel... <laughs> it died to the mortar. It died to his goblin brother from another mother. Let's go. <laughs> oh my gosh. We can go in for another goblin barrel counter with more goblins. It's goblins on goblins on goblins. There are goblins everywhere in the arena. And this guy is spamming the CRL emote because, you know, he thinks that's where we deserve to be. Maybe one of our goblins will shoot us up into CRL at the top of the leaderboards, guys. He is so upset right now. And you know what? I don't blame him. The interesting interaction at the start, 100% into this game. We certainly gave the man that loves bait a lot to hate. And after sliming that goblin barrel, sir, we slid our way up to 959 in the world. At over 2,500 medals, now we're ranked on the global leaderboards. And we got another top ladder player. Our mission is make this man buzz like a bee. Obviously, if he's going to see the mortar and then he gets the firecracker sniped, he's not going to be expecting that. So now the mortar locks onto the tower because we snipe the firecracker and we get a huge interaction in our favor. One thing that I do enjoy doing is going minions plus goblins because that does counter the hog rider if we drop there at the right point, which we didn't. Oh, the hog rider slid on past instead of getting body blocked by the goblins. That is a huge difference. One less hog rider hit would be a pretty big favorable play for us. Anyway, in this matchup, we want to activate King Tower whenever we can. So I'm going to cycle my little prince here, see if he wants to go for a firecracker or something. We can actually ice spear and make a prediction on the firecracker if we wanted but I'm not going to. 
Gonna go in for a poison on that just to get damage. He's gonna log, so he's also gonna get damage. It's bad for us to click the mighty... I mean, it's really bad for us to click the Little Prince ability here because we're not going to get too much from it. We can go in for minions and we can go for our mortar. We're going to force that extra elixir. If that mortar locks on a tower, that'd be huge. I don't think that's going to happen. He might activate King Tower. He misses it barely. If we can kill the goblins, the mortar will lock onto the tower, but that's not going to happen either. So I wonder if we're able to finish off the Hog Rider with the Little Prince ability. He's probably going to hog soon. I need to have six elixir if I'm going to do that. If I go goblins, it's too easy for him to predict. And if I go for goblins, he'll just go for a pre-log or an earthquake and he'll finesse me. So I could go Little Prince Ice Spirit and Little Prince Ability. And that's going to be able to completely captivate the hog and shut it down. So let's go for Little Prince and make a prediction. He doesn't do it. I guess he was making a prediction on top of our mortar, which we don't drop. We can go in for a Little Prince Ability here and finish that off. We could go for a poison. I don't think that's going to be able to hit. So it's going to go on the other side. That's fine. Let's go for a goblins here, Ice Spirit. And then let's go in for a mortar. And then let's go for minions. Reason why I'm playing so aggressively here is because I know that the Mortar will be able to finish off the Firecracker and target the tower that we want. And we've taken damage on the right-hand side, but we've taken way more on the left. So it doesn't matter. I still want the Mortar disposed in a spot where it can lock on the tower. Let's go! He thought it was going to go in the night! And when we lock on the tower and hit the Goblins instead. Beautiful. Let's click the ability here. I bet you it goes in for a Firecracker. Want to finesse it? We're going to go Goblins other side. Now the Firecracker doesn't hit what he wants. And of course, he's only going to get like one shot with the Hog. It's huge for me. I'm going to poison where the firecracker is going to go, and then I'm going to go for another mortar. So I don't love this, but I think it's going to work out in our favor if he decides to like just try to go for knights and teslas. Because what we can do is we can go in for a minions here, save our ice spear for the hog rider, go in for a miner, expect him to go in for goblins, pre-log them, go for an ice spirit here on top of the firecracker, then go goblins, and then go for minions. I think we're okay. Meanwhile, the Hog Rider isn't going to do... Uh, it's going to do a lot, but it's not going to do too much. We can start to play defensive mortars for the rest of the game, and I think that's going to be the way to success. So I'm going to go in for a Miner here in a spot that he's not going to predict. Uh, we're going to go in for the Mortar when he decides to go for a Hog. And if he doesn't, we're going to still do this. And then we'll go for the Mortar, and then we'll go in for this. And then we can Log if we need to, which I kind of should... I think that's going to be our best way of killing the Firecracker. Then we can go different Miner placement, expecting him to go Goblin, so we'll Poison. Yeah, do we kill the goblins quick enough, though? I don't think so. We just need to keep going for mortars on defense against the hog rider. That's the secret to success here. He's going to cycle a firecracker. It's not going to matter. We can do this. Got a pre-earthquake for sure. Should start to pre-earthquake on me. All right, there it is. We're going to go little prince. We're going to go click the ability. And we should be able to kill all of his stuff here with this firecracker coming down from the mortar evolution. We're going to go in for another minor placement, go in for a poison. Hopefully he messes this up. He doesn't catch it. We're going to go for a log. And I should just be able to go for one more mortar. And then one more ice spirit. And I'm fine. If the, the hog rider gets pulled, we're chilling. So I'm going to go ice spirit here. Because that will be able to stop the goblins and the hog rider. This is such an intense match. I think we're barely going to win it. Let's go. So... It's important to go in for defensive mortars when you want to just minor poison cycle. And if you've activated King Tower against the Firecracker, you will be able to clean it up. As long as the Firecracker evolution doesn't end up locking onto your tower, it will be a win. Don't try to defend with Little Princes, Minions, or Goblins. If you do, you're going to give the Firecracker a lineup for absurd value. Dropping the mortar in the middle means that the Firecracker will shoot in the middle and miss the towers. Meanwhile, the minor poison will give you guaranteed damage, handing you the win. And after hammering that Hog Rider deck, we're at 808 in the world. Yo, this guy's got a Battle Healer in the banner, so probably going to be running a low skill strategy if he likes that card. So let's see what he's going to do. We're going to go for a Mortar and bait out some Elixir. He's going to go Goblin Gang, so it's probably going to be Goblin Giant right now if I had to guess. Yeah, definitely going to be a Goblin Giant player. If I just let that lock onto our Mortar, we can go for Goblins and full counter it. Because the Fisherman's going to lock onto the Goblins instead of locking onto the Mortar. If you didn't know, the Fisherman always targets the unit that you drop near your tower instead of the actual tower if you drop it at the right timing. We're going to Ice Spirit. Hopefully, it jumps on all the skeletons. Beautiful micro on our end. We can go in for a Miner and probably go for Minions here and force out Arrows if he's going to have it, or Rage. Oh, he's going to Fireball! Yo, that's going to be a horrible trade for him because he still has to deal with a Miner, and he's going to go Little Prince, and now he's going to have Limited Elixir in his arsenal to deal with a Mortar, and we can do the exact same micro play that we did last time to capitalize on a good interaction against his Fisherman. Mortar locks. All right, let's log here. Let's let that lock, and then let's go for minions. We know he's going to click the ability. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't have elixir for the ability. Insane. That's so good for us. We can just capitalize and take as much tower as we want. We're eating good tonight, boys. I need to cycle one card to get to the mortar evolution. We're trying to keep his elixir low because we don't want him to go goblin giant. We're always going to have ice spirit or little prince in cycle. We don't really want to cycle those. And all right, we could miner on the tower. He's probably going to ignore it and set up a big push. Gonna go recruits for the very first time to this game. 
He finally got breathing room, guys. He finally got breathing room for the recruits. Gonna poison for some nice damage. We're gonna eat the recruits damage uh, on the left. It's not gonna matter. It's not really gonna get any counter push. A little prince here, and we can click the ability. Yeah, let's just click the ability now. Go ice spirit and then log. Ice spirit's nice because it is able to kill the majority of the skeletons. Not all of them. Actually, it missed this time. I guess the skeletons were discombobulated because there were units nearby, so the ice spirit timing didn't work as well as we wanted it to. Or maybe I just missed it that time. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go in for a mortar, and we're going to apply more pressure because he's going to have to go for recruits, and we want him to drop them at the river. If he drops them at the river, they're going to be slightly too close. Okay, we can go for minions, and we can go in for a miner here, and we know that we're going to be able to kill the Little Prince because the minions should lock onto that, and it should also finish off the recruits on the other side and go for goblins here. And I'm not super scared of the fishermen, even though I might... Uh, maybe I should have been. I don't know. We're going to log, and I think I'm okay here. We're not taking that much damage. We can Ice Spirit, and then we can go for minions to fully counter the wall breakers. And then we can go for a mortar in the left-hand side. Playing against these low-skill strategies that are super spammy means that I don't really want to give him the advantage to go in for the recruits. Because as soon as he gets the advantage to go for the recruits and he goes on offense, it tests my mechanics. And if I make miss-ups, then I lose. So I'm going to try to play aggressive and force out Elixir from him. And he's not falling for it that much. Also, if you didn't know, try to drop your minions on the back end of the Skeleton Barrel. Notice how these minions don't die. They don't even take damage from the Skeleton Barrel. So that's a cool interaction that a lot of people don't know. We're in a miner in front. I bet you he goes recruits, and he does. Let's click the ability. Let's go for log. And then we should hit the goblins too, and then we should be able to poison and win. So as long as this poison ticks down, we win this game. One more shot. Come on. Yeah. Let's go. The recruits are on the tower on the left-hand side, so it's slightly scary. But we dug his tower down just in time. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an amazing rest of your day.